what's up YouTube today's video as well let's put it this way my 91 here my main driver the rear diff has given up in it I've been chasing a loud popping sound couldn't figure out where it's coming from finally I said okay wait a minute I've done chased everything else down pulled the drive shaft out of it picked the back end up where I could spin the diffs and the axles I spin the pinion in the axle and when I did the pinion comes around a little bit I started to hear thump Okay, no drive shaft hooked up, which therefore takes out the issue, the possibility of a transfer case or transmission or anything like that. Uh, so I put my hand on the diff cover, spin the pinion again, and I could hear that thump again, and I could feel the vibration coming through the differential cover. So yeah, the 91, the differential is kind of giving up in it. This one has the 355 gears in. This has the 307. So I'm getting a gear upgrade, but here's the here's the kind of the catch 22 to this uh, particular issue. The front diff in this is still going to have the 307 gears in it. Now, for you people who are hardened, die-hard off-roaders, knows that is a major, major no-no. So what I'm going to do for right now, since I'm kind of under a time crunch, I'm putting the rear diff out of the 93 under this one so I can get it back roadworthy again, pull my front drive shaft out, and so therefore I don't have a dub moment, lock the transfer case in, and watch my uh, transfer case turn into shrapnel from two different gear ratios front to rear. And so people who don't know what I'm talking about, you cannot mix uh, differential ratios, gear ratios between the front axle and rear axle because the dry shafts then at that point turn at different turns, revolutions per minute or RPMs. You can't do that because the transfer case is only set up to say, you know, spin this way one direction, spin that way one speed. You know, each, each output shaft of the transfer case has to spin one, spin one speed, not two. It doesn't work that way. So I have to pull the front drive shaft out to make sure this will stay streetable, stays drivable back and forth to work until uh, I pull the front end out of rust bucket. When I pull the front axle out of the rust, rust bucket, that's going to give me an opportunity to show you guys how to do a good um, front end rebuild, how to do ball joints, how to do uh, tie rods and all that kind of fun stuff. So it's actually going to be, you know, kind of a benefit for you viewers by me being able to do that. I pull the front axle out of this one put this front axle under that one, rebuild rust bucket front end to go under this one so I'll have all new parts from my driver. Therefore, on rust bucket, when I build it up for a um, toy, I can build it like I want to because I'm working with old parts anyway. They both have high pinion Dana, 30, uh, high pinion Dana 30s under them, so that's cool. So I'm getting a gear upgrade on this one. That one, rust bucket, when I do the gears on it, I'm probably going to hunt me down to 8.8 .8 to go under the back of it because I'm putting a bad differential under rust bucket coming out of this one. I put the bad differential, it still makes it mobile to move it around like I need to as I build it. But when I score me an 8.8 .8 to go into the back of it, then I can show the conversion process of that. Cool? Cool. Okay. So there you go. So there's enough of the gabbing. Let's get to swapping some diffs. Got the drive bar, oh, just flopping. Top mount broke off. Yeah, this ought to be interesting. Got two down, two more to go. And yeah, they're not coming off very easily. We're getting there. Boy, that looks rough. Fight all the way to the bottom. <laughs> and they're still smoking. <laughs> so I got this one broke loose enough. It's gotten a little easier, but I bought a whole lot.
back to manual labor. <laughs> <laughs> One down. All mine's out. I got one back there still being up. Now one of these, I had to loosen twice with that breaker bar. Yeah. And it still <laughs> popped that impact all the way to the last thread. Let's see if I can get some more of the impact on this one. Got the shocks loose. This right here, the bolt was seized to the sleeve right there, so I had to take a hammer and beat the crap out of it, make it turn loose and beat it through. Then I had to take a screwdriver to get in behind it right here and pry it out. Eight millimeter, get your U joints loose. And like I pointed out earlier, I'm glad my track bars actually broke, so I ain't got full with that. Then we're gonna figure out where we're gonna take the brake line loose. It looks like they run a new line across the pumpkin here and up this way, so the hard line on the rear end looks so good. The soft line here actually looks relatively new. So maybe if I break it loose up here. Let's see if I get lucky up here and break it loose. We'll find out. And okay, now we're gonna pull our brake line here. The soft line looks like it's good, so I'm gonna try to save it. You got this little flat clip right here, pull it out, which I've already pulled out for our channel locks. Get that out. Now what the problem I'm having is this old rusty crusty line right here doesn't want to come out of the soft line. So my thought is I'm going to pull that out of the bracket. I'm just going to cut this hard line and I'll rerun it because if you look down the frame, I mean it's just like, what the heck? That used to be a brake line. And it's about the consistency of a twig now. So yeah, I'll rerun the brake lines when it comes time to build this thing. So yep, get that sucker out of there. In case y'all wonder, of course this rusty old thing I'm wearing safety glasses, but rust still tastes funky, just by the way. Just let you know. Okay, going through our checklist, we got the drive shaft loose. Luckily that broke already. Shocks are loose. Brake line's hanging here. And do 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 that broke loose. Shocks are loose. So really the only thing we gotta do now, this thing's rusted to the leaves. We gotta make it separate. So put a little jack, put the jack under it right there, jack up, put a little pressure on it. We'll probably get the hammer and beat this out of it, make it turn loose. Okay, we had the weight, we had the jack in the center of the pumpkin right there pushing up on the axle, it didn't turn loose instantly. So what we've got is the jack under the drum here. Not a whole lot of pressure, just enough to pick it up a little bit. I took the hammer, hit it on top of the leaf, which made the leaf turn loose of the differential. What you've got underneath here, of course the rust doesn't help none, but there is a, you'll sh I'll show you here in a moment, there's a centering bolt that holds the leaf packs together, that presses up inside of a hole inside the axle that keeps the axle centered amongst the leaf. But you'll see that here in a little bit. Now we're going to go to the other side and knock it loose. Jack, you got the pressure on it? Yeah. Alright. Oh, hit the frame. I'm spraying water everywhere, where's that coming from? There she goes. It's loose. Now we gotta cut our emergency brake cables. The e-brake cables are shot from all the rust and junk. So probably what I'm gonna do, I heck I know I'm gonna cut them, just how I'm gonna cut them is gonna be a question. Probably end up pulling out the plasma and just wipe them quick. But anyway, rear end's pretty well loose. All the thing I got is the vent tube on that side, cut the e-brake cables and we'll pull the axle out. For the e-brake cables, 
get in there and now it ain't easy now but it's not too bad and done so now I'm gonna cut the vent tube right here I'm gonna run a new vent so that's not a big deal either Got that done so at this point the rear end is ready to come out there it is got the rear end out of the rust bucket now we're about setting up to pull the uh, rear end out of the 91 model so when we pull the one out of the 91 if I can I'll set the camera up and you guys can see how we brought it out it's not hard it's just kind of like working a jigsaw puzzle bringing them out of there with the leaves still in it so I'm gonna set that thing up get ready to pull it Okay, being that this rig right here sits a block taller, my jack stands aren't tall enough to reach the frame. So we're going to got the 35s pulled off on the rear. But we're going to set this down slowly on the jack stands. And because the engine being up front, it's the balance should keep the everything stable. So we can go ahead and slowly set it down. Let's watch the jack stands. Okay. Well, this Jeep was pretty easy. Well, of course, well, I put, we put this lift kit in this thing not long ago. So there was no rusty bolts, nothing anywhere. So it was easy. Check out my shock. It's in good shape. Yep, yeah, not so quiet. Okay, all I got to do is my brake line vent tube. And you joints are loose. Vent fish pulling out. So we about got this rear end pulled out. And it ain't been, what, 15 minutes now? Okay, now we got to take off the brake line. It's a 3 8 wrench to get that. And get your wrench locked onto it and bump don't just right, come and handle it take your hand and just pop it and knock the wrench upward and you know normally like I, I like if you guys if you pay attention to my videos you've heard me say it before i hate body lifts but this is where body lifts come in handy because you can just get things so much easier so i'll get into that brake line pull that clip right there and the brake line's out i've already cut the mercy brake cable over there the vent tube is was right here got that pulled out so we're almost there yay okay once the brake line's out you gotta get that clip and what i end up doing is to getting my screwdriver coming in from the bottom or through this way lodging the screwdriver into the clip and bumping it with a hammer to knock it up because they kind of get rusty crusty stuck this rig right here don't have a whole lot of rust in it so it's been pretty easy to deal with but being my driver rig i gotta be a little bit more careful not tearing stuff up bringing it out so brake line is out yay okay we finished the drive shaft pin tube this baby is about out the drive shaft bolts is all we like yep and this is what yoke i did the conversion on as you guys can see right there i got four u bolts in this one so finish taking those out and the rear end pulls you can notice how we're putting the jack under the pumpkin right there and the jack is running in line with the rear end what you do is once you get the weight of the rear end up off the springs you're kind of quasi balanced uh on the jack let the jack hold the weight and you manipulate the rear end out this way you know, whichever way you get the clearance well i've got the jeep staggered rust bucket is forward of 91 a little bit so therefore i can bring it straight out the passenger side so what we'll do is we'll get the weight supported on the jack and then we'll roll the jack out that way to get part of it out just kind of work with it out of time now we get to the point it looks like a jigsaw puzzle that's when i'll set up the camera so you guys can see how to twist the rear ends to bring them out okay i almost got our froggy with the camera but what we did after we got the spring purchase loose tilted the pinion straight down i picked up on this side right here just enough to set the pinion on the jack and the jack supported the weight which allowed the weight of the jack was carrying the rear end we brought it out this much just about a little bit and i thought oh wait a minute let me set the camera up on his side the backing plate this thing right here the backing plate is riding on the spring right now so we'll bring it the rest of the way out and you guys can watch the action all right stand back up on the pinion and now we're gonna have to let it down and get under the chunk yep I'll just pick it up. Ow, wait, wait, wait. What? 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 My hand is in there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oops.
shot. Oh. I ate my Wheaties this morning. Actually, I had oatmeal. Close enough. I'm not going to run everything behind me. Phew! Alright, it's out of 91. Time to put the other rear end in. Well, let me show y'all the difference between salty climate and not salty climate. Most of this right here is all scale on the top of it, so there's no real structural issues. It looks like crap, and there is every voice inside my head screaming to clean it up and paint it before I put it in, but I ain't got time for that. But also, once I got the rear end out of my 91, I wanted, I seen something that if I'd caught this a long time ago, I would have fixed it immediately. Do not do this. First of all, look at the 93. Okay, the brake lines aren't run very cleanly. I'll give that, not a big deal but it's all one piece from here all the way over the wheel cylinder both sides even though they're just kind of haphazardly bent it's a solid piece of tubing okay people brake lines too darn cheap but you be doing crap like this i've run this jeep for shoot six years or more and for, i've never really had any major brake issues except for the front so i never really caught this this is one of the union fittings to where they put the brass uh, fitting inside that little knurl. Uh, I forget what they call it, but it's a little compression fitting inside here. People, do not, do not, do not, do not do this. That compression fitting, that is just nothing more than a brass fitting that gets squeezed down. If it isn't seated properly, it'll pop that brake line. If you pop that brake line, guess what? You don't have brakes. Do not use compression fittings. If you've got to splice a brake line together, Get the, a proper flare kit and do the double flare, made them together properly. Do not do these compression fittings. But honestly, I mean, that's from there to there. Whoever passed this in before me, before I owned the previous owner, should have just run a new brake line and called it done. But I seen that when we got my 91 model rear end, rear end out. And I had to point that out to you. That is a major safety issue. And honestly, I got lucky that I didn't have an issue with that. So... We're gonna put the old salty rear back in. I hate to put it in looking like this, but I need my rig back. And eventually, I'm gonna do an 8.8 .8 conversion anyway, so therefore, I'll get rid of this piece of junk then. So, all right, enough of the gabbing. We're gonna get this thing put in. Looking down through there, you think we've got a Jeep addiction? We've got 91, 93, 2000, 2000 model, and 2006. Yeah, we got Jeep issues. 300,000 miles, 100,000. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this right here has 150,000 on it. This right here, the clock shows somewhere around 150, but the engine's been swapped out a couple times in this one, I know. 150,000 on that one. Get this, 305,000 miles on that one. The 2006 model right there has 305,000 miles on it. Does not use a drop of oil. Runs as good today as the day it rolled off the showroom floor. That thing drives absolutely awesome. Inline six cylinder, six B, three seventy three gears. Yeah, she crawls. But I just want to point it out. Yes, we have a Jeep addiction. Okay, we got rusty rear end stuck in here now, and the pins are located. And we just manhandled so using the jack. We just kind of manhandled it in there. Went to you off the bat. Um, all you new parts Nazis, I'm going to reuse the old U-Bolts. They're not very old, and yes, I realize when you put them in that they can be like a stretch to yield type thing. For one, I don't have a U-Bolt. For two, I have to order them. So, ain't going to happen. Today. But, yeah, today anyway. So, I just want to get my ride up and rolling, and I'll get another set of U-Bolts later on. But, got to get her going. Okay, putting the U-Bolts in, take them, put them in like this, up at an angle. Get them under your brake line. Tap them in. Once you get them tapped in, rotate them down. Rotate, dang it. Then there you go. Now we can bring a plate. 
here, bring it up, put them in the holes, and put and put the washers and nuts on. Ooh, it done got dark on us out here. So since I can't video in the dark, I'll catch you guys up uh, probably next weekend when we button things up. There's a few issues came up. I can drive it, but I'm not really comfortable with it. So next weekend I'll finish it up and catch you guys up on the video. Last weekend got the rear end put under the uh, 91 and you guys seen all the salt scale and all that kind of crap over it. And so what I'm planning on doing, I'm going to take it to the car wash real quick, use the high pressure hot water and stuff to um, see if it is just scale or is how much of it is actually rust. Well, I roll up to the car wash here and I see that the ropes are strung across the bays. Uh, the vacuum's got the hose missing. I'll pay a little closer attention. This thing is shut down. I did not realize this. It has been, I don't know, years since I've been over here. And so, yeah, the other car washes here in town are those, uh, you know, you drive into it, they wash it while you're inside of it, or, you know, there's manned or, autom or, manned or drive through automatics, you know? So, yeah, I just can't roll up and say, oh, excuse, they say, hey, excuse me, sir, we can wash your Jeep. And I'm like, no, just wash my rear end. Could you imagine the look of that? Hmm. Well, I took it out for a test drive. That 355 gear set is so much better than the 307s. I didn't like the way these uh, lines looked to begin with because they had that rusty, crusty look on them. But when they were run originally on the uh, Project Rust bucket, there was no what this was not bent up over the U bolts. So, I just took it, as you've seen, to the car wash. I thought I was going to wash this rear end off. When I get back, and pull the tire off, gun, check the brake lines and stuff, seeing this is wet. Well, my dad just pushed the brakes, and sure enough, right at the bottom of that line, I'm shooting fluid. So, I'm going to measure that line, see what size it is. Go get me another one. Actually, I just take the line off, take it with me. It's a smart thing to do. I'll get you a 3 8 wrench, and we're going to take these lines off this rear end. Don't worry about losing fluid, because we're going to bleed the brakes anyway. Okay, here's a clip on the rear tube that holds the brake line down, keeps from it flopping around. Now, whenever you change out your brake lines, oftentimes the factory brake line has that little spring wrapped around it, and you're not going to get that spring up 99.9% of the time. It just ain't going to happen. But at least, whenever you put your brake line in, get your small piece of vacuum line or uh, fuel line or something, and put right there in the length, so I get the camera back a little better within the length of that piece right here because that will help insulate that vacuum line uh, I'm sorry insulate that brake line from wobbling around and eventually wearing a hole in your line so when I put the new line in I'm gonna give you a short piece of a uh, vacuum line or a fuel line or something wrap that section then put this down over top of the line help insulate it brakes are important people protect them Okay, here on the other side, it's also 3 eighths of an inch to take off the brake line, which goes over top of the rear differential and comes all the way over to the wheel cylinder. Now, before I head to the store to get the new brake line, I'm going to pull that plug right there and check my uh, fluid in the rear diff to make sure it's one good level, two, it's not burn or fried. And really, on the Dana 35s, the only thing you got to do is pull that plug, stick your pinky in. Look at that. Yeah, I got it on my nose now. Mm. It actually smells all right. It still doesn't smell burnt. So guess what? Rear diff good. So we ain't gonna fool with that. And the fluid level's about right. Meaning, you stick your finger in, and if you just touch it when you first go in, you're good. If you go within, say, the first bend, you're still good. See, there it was. And I was it's only about that far down below the hole. It's only like that far down below the hole right there. So you're good to go to the levels. It does smell burnt. So I'm not going to worry about changing diff fluid in this thing. So if everyone needs a brake line, head to the stove. Okay, here's the size for your brake lines. The uh, driver size is going to be a 316 by 20. And the one for the, going over to the passenger side from the block here is 316 by 40 inches. And it seems to fit pretty good. Okay, I've got it screwed in over on that side and I kind of snaked it up over top of the pumpkin right there. And what I've got here is uh, Dad has some kind of it's like gas line for a boat. 
And uh, so I wrapped that line right there to provide some insulation, vibration insulation to it. Slide that down a little bit. Slide, dang it. Little more, little bit more. Come on, come on. You can, there you go. Then we're gonna take our clip here and go back over top of this, bolt it back down to the differential, which will, that rubber will give a vibration insulation here so that bracket doesn't eat through the fuel line. I'm mean, eating through the brake line. And here, well, we'll get this here in a minute. I'll show you what to do with that. Okay, I've still got this bracket loose. So therefore this cable, this uh, brake line can move a little bit as I adjust this. So what I did, took me a 3S extension, lay it right on top of the U-bolt. And try to keep my hands up out of the camera so you guys see what's going on. Okay. Lay it on top of the U-bolt right there. Take your hand here, press down on the line hard. And see how it makes that little rise right there? So once this is tightened down, that's gonna be pushed down against the axle housing. This is gonna come up and bend up over your U-bolts. Therefore clearing them, no issues with it rubbing and wearing a hole in it. So, easy trick. Okay, we've got that bracket tightened down to secure the brake line to the axle. And look at that rise right there. Just tuck my finger under both ends of it. No one here touching the U-bolts. Plenty of clearance. Cosmetically looks appealing because it's a nice gradual uh, transition straight into the wheel cylinder. Sweet. Now I can break it. I can bleed this baby.
and that's how you put a rear end all by and that's how you put a rear end in all by yourself and some of you may be wondering why the heck am I even doing this well for the most part I just want to keep this thing mobile so I can move around the driveway until I'm ready to start replacing first thing I'm going to start doing I'm going to order the kit and this whole section from about right here back is rotten I'm going to replace all this back here straighten up the rear frame and start going around the rest of the frame, beating it up, seeing where else I need to patch up. I know y'all are saying, God, you're crazy for doing that, but I've got a reason. Since I had the rear end out and the tires, rear tires were off, I thought I'd go ahead and stick my old 33s on it to, one, get them out of my way, because they were stuck in the back of my shop, all up in my way, right next to the engine block and the lockers where I keep all my tools stored, so I just kept having to jump around them. So I thought I'd give this poor little Jeep a little bit of dignity. It's kind of amazing what a set of wheels and tires will do for one. Even though it's kind of like, you know, still I've put in, was it one of my commenters said, I uh, put lipstick on a pig. That's okay. About two weeks, I'm gonna be heading to go see my son. I'm gonna be there for about a week. So when I get back, it's gonna be modern time. So stay tuned. Hope you liked that video, everyone. If you did, hit me with a thumbs up down below. Now, this is one, another one of those cases to where sometimes you get yourself caught in a bind and you just jam out and do what you got to do. So switching the rears between the 93 and the 91 got me back on the road. Yes, I got a gear ratio mismatch now, but that's okay. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm going to take the front differential out of the 93 here, put new ball joints, tie rod ends, all that good fun stuff, rebuild that front, um, all the front uh, steering geometry stuff, put that under the 91, pull the 91 out, and then I'll, I'll slide under the 93 to keep it mobile where I can build off of it. And eventually I'll start upgrading diffs on the 90 on the 93. Uh, that's for the mercy brake cables. The ones on the 91, my regular everyday driver, those things were seized up in junk. The ones on the 93, they were semi-functional, but where they had rubbed against the frame so much and all the rust and corrosion and salt and I mean just everything was eating them up. They still kind of moved a little bit, but they were had a lot of places in them that were worn all the way through to the bare cable itself. It had went all the way through the jacket and made it all the way into the cable. So therefore, you know, I really didn't want to reuse those anyway. So on the 93, because this is gonna be my toy for the most part. It's gonna be a streetable toy, but a toy nonetheless. I want to do some um, emergency um, emergency brake upgrade tricks on that. No, I'm not going to use, uh, pro probably not going to use factory Jeep parts on that. I'm going to do something a little different. So you guys hang out and make sure you catch that. The um, 91, I'll probably put the cables back in the original. You know, rebuild the whole emergency brake cable system when I rebuild the back brakes. And the, um, probably pull the uh, pedal out of the 93 to go in the 91 because the pedal in the 91 is bad. The one in the 93 seems like it's okay. So I'm going to switch out some parts there because where my roll cage is going to come down in the 93 is that all that stuff's going to be in the way down there anyway so i'll just might as well take it out and reuse it in the 90 uh, 91. i'm getting going to get confused on these years here man so i've talked to you about why i did the e-brake cables like i did we'll talk to you about the gear ratios and i just want to touch one, on one more thing about the whole gear ratio thing where i've got mixed match gear ratios now between both rigs the 93 has a 307 in the rear, 355 in front. The 91 has a 355 rear, 307 front, as it stands right at this video. That's going to be changed pretty soon, but as it stands right now, which is which in the most cases, pretty, which is bad, period. I don't care how you look at it. But what you want to do is pull that front drive shaft so I don't get a brain dump and decide, hey, I'm going to put it four-wheel drive. Then your transfer case turns to shrapnel. Bad thing, okay? So... I'm gonna pull. I pulled my front ax, uh, front drive shaft, so I wouldn't accidentally make the mistake of locking the T cases in and blowing something up. So, which means they're effectively a two-wheel drives at the moment. But that's all right. We'll get to it. So, ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's programming on how to swap rear diffs. So, if you liked that video, thumbs up down below, please. That tells me you like it. And don't forget to subscribe, because when you subscribe, you'll be notified each time I release one of these videos. And you may get, you may learn a little something. I try to no matter what it is, even if it's just a random video of some kind, I try to give you guys a little bit of education somehow. So hit that subscribe button. If you got any questions, you got any comments, leave them down below. Now in your comments, if you want to say, hey man, uh, I did an e-brake conversion, I used Cherokee parts. 
Tell me about it. Because maybe, you know, give, you guys give me some ideas of what to do to convert these things, okay? I mean, I got ideas of things I may use, but you guys may come up with something better than I. And I say, hey, man, that's a good idea. I'm going to go that route. So leave some comments down below if you've ever done the e-brake conversions. And tell me what you used. Cool. Or if you just want to say, hey, man, what's up? And that's cool, too. So everyone, I really appreciate you hanging out with me. Peace out. Later, y'all. So this concludes today's programming of How to Swap Rear Ends. That sounded weird. <laughs>